Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Dear students, you are welcome in this class. Topic of this lecture is strategies to enhance the crop production in problem soils. So many times we get confused about problem soils. Any soil which in which there are certain problems and uh, farming or crop production becomes difficult, then generally that becomes problem soil. So after completion of this lecture, you will be able to learn the meaning of problem soils especially salt affected soils and their distribution. There are number of uh, or different kind of uh, problem soils, but what we'll, uh, we will restrict our discussion only to the salt affected soils and learn the strategies to reclaim these uh, soils that is saline and alkali soils, alkali soils or sodic soils. Some difficult words, desertification land degradation in arid, semi-arid and dry subhumid areas resulting from various factors including climate variations and human activities. Electrical conductivity EC, normally it is written as ECE, a small e, a measure of the concentration of salts defined as the conductance of a cubic centimeter of water at a standard temperature of 25 degree centigrade expressed in decisimus per, per meter. Uh, intermittently flooded, substrate is usually exposed but surface water can be present for variable periods without deductible seasonal periodicity. Inundation is not predictable in a given season and is dependent upon highly localized rain storms. Inundation means a land is full of water, water is standing above the land. Inundated land, land covered with or subject to overflows of water such as from floods or tides. Land degradation, land which due to natural processes or human activity is no longer able to sustain properly an economic function and or the original natural ecological function then it is said to be degraded land. Land type, a recognizable and definable landscape that is combination of landforms, topography and vegetation possessing a particular climate and usually characterized by one type of soil or parent material. Marginal land, land which is not suitable economically or productive is most in most circumstances for a generalized type of land use due to the presence of climatic soil associated or geographical constraint. Normally this marginal land is poor in fertility and its productivity is also low mainly because of certain weather, climate or soil related constraints. Salinity, the relative concentration of salts usually sodium chloride in a given soil or water. Salinization, the accumulation of soluble salts at the surface or at some point below the surface of the soil profile to levels that have negative effects on plant growth and or on soil. So salinization can occur in surface uh, soils or in subsurface of the soil also. Salt tolerant plant, a plant with ability to grow and set seed in saline environment without significant reductions in plant biomass or yield that is your salt tolerant plant. Soil conservation practices, practices of land management, cultivation systems, land management and small construction works for correcting, preventing or reducing soil degradation means these are the practices that control or that reduce the soil loss process. Now problem soils, how problem soils is defined? Some soils offer serious limitations to their agricultural use. 
Traditionally, these soils are known as problem soils, for which special, innovative, and sustainable management practices should be adopted. And some soils develop problems due to misuse and mismanagement by humans. So there are variety of causes for formation of problem soils or development of problems in soils. Some are uh, natural, some are man-made, and some are affected by the climate. So expert consultation of the Asian Network on Problem Soils proposed the following 11 categories of problem soils. So there could be different categories of problem soils, and out of them, most common are these 11 categories in Asia. So cold soils, land areas with a 24-hour mean temperature of less than 5 degrees centigrade during the growing period. Dry soils, desert and semi-desert soils with growing periods which are rainless dry, again kind of problem. Steep soils, soils which have steep slopes in excess of 30 percent, mostly in mountainous regions. Fourth one is shallow soils, soils which have depth limitations with 50 centimeter of the surface caused by the presence of coherent and hard rock, again mostly in hilly areas. Poorly drained soils, soils which are waterlogged and or flooded for significant part of the year. These are poor drained soils and under these conditions uh, uh, farming or crop production is very difficult. Coarse textured soils, mostly sandy soils, soils having coarse texture with less than 18 percent clay and more than 65 percent sand or have gravel, uh, gravel stones, boulders or rock outcrops in surface. Next is heavy cracking clays, vertisols. These are common in southern India and also in central in India. So soils which crack at least one centimeter wide at 50 centimeter depth, depth at some period in most years. These are heavy cracking soils. Poorly fertile soils, soils which exhibit deficiencies in plant nutrients. And, and the most important from Indian point of view is saline and sodic soils. Soils with high salt content and high exchangeable sodium saturation respectively within 100 centimeter of the surface are saline and sodic soils and they are also referred as salt affected soils. Next is acid sulfate soils in which sulfide materials have accumulated under permanently saturated brackish water conditions in general. Peat soils, histosols, soils in which more than half of the upper 80 centimeter is composed of organic materials. So these are actually organic soils full of organic matter. So uh, out of all these uh, problem soils, we will discuss or restrict our discussion to salt affected soils that is saline alkaline soil the problem soils, even government of India considers uh, salt affected soils or saline alkaline soil as uh, problem soils. So as per available estimate, nearly 50 percent of the irrigated land in the arid and semi-arid regions has some degree of soil salinization problems, particularly in dry land areas, rain fed areas, we have this problem quite common. The phenomenon of accumulation of excess salt or acid in the root zone results in a partial or complete loss of soil productivity and such soil is defined as problem soil. So in this case, government of India considers alkali, saline and acid soils and exist mainly in arid and semi-arid regions. So salt affected soils are also found in subhumid, humid climates particularly in coastal regions where the ingress of sea water through estuaries and rivers cause large scale salinization. Soil salinity is also a serious problem in areas where groundwater with high salinity is used for irrigation. That is the case of uh, Haryana state or maybe Punjab or parts of Uttar Pradesh where the groundwater is saline and if irrigation is done with this saline water, then salinity develops in the soil. Most serious salinity problem is being faced in those arid and semi-arid regions of the country 
where canal irrigation is major source of irrigation because canal irrigation you get seepage of water and then in the nearby area particularly you get water logging conditions and which may result in salinization of the soil. Now see the extent of land degradation in India. It is not just salt affected soil which is degraded. There may be some other soils also which are degraded and total area under degraded soils in the country is quite high. You can see from this table. So water erosion is about 73.27 million hectare land suffer from water erosion in India. Wind erosion 12.4 million hectare and total land is 85 or you can say 86 million hectare land in India is affected by erosion. And then exclusively salt affected soil is 5.44 and salt affected and water eroded soils is 1.2. If you make the total of all these it is roughly uh, 7 million hectares. So you can say in India, 7 million hectare soils are salt affected soils. Exclusively acidic soils are 5 million hectare. Acid pH less than, uh, acidic soils pH less than 5.5 is 5.72. And overall you can see the last row where grand total arable land and open forest uh, approximately 120 million hectare land in India is degraded. Now come back to the saline and sodic soils which we are discussing. So sodic soils are also called as alkali soils. So saline soils and alkali soil or you can say saline soils and sodic soils. So saline soils are normally white, they are sometimes called as white alkali and sodic soils are called as black alkali. So you can see the differences in all these categories. First one category is saline non-sodic soil, EC of the saturated soil extract at 25 degree centigrade is more than 4 decisimals per meter. ESP is exchangeable sodium percentage is less than 15 and sodium absorption ratio SAR is less than 13 percent and it is saline soil. Next soil is saline sodic soil. So you can see EC is more than 4, ESP is more than 15 and SAR is more than 13. Third one is sodic soil or non-saline sodic soil, EC is less than 4, ESP is more than 15 and SAR is more than 13 in sodic soils. And then there could be non-saline, non-sodic, EC is less than 4, ESP is less than 15 and SAR is also less than 13. So these are your normal soils. So we uh, mostly restrict our discussion to saline soil and sodic soils. And most of the time these kind of things are asked from the student. So it is advisable to remember these kind of data related to saline and sodic soils. Now saline soils, so now uh, our discussion confined to saline soils. So saline soils contain sufficient neutral soluble salts that adversely affect the growth of most crop plants. The ECE of 4 decisimals per meter is still used as the standard for saline soils world over, but the yield of most crop plant is reduced at this EC. Many crop, crops exhibit yield reduction at much lower ECE values such as the ECE of 1 decisimals per meter per meter. So 4 decisimals is the last limit I think and ideal maybe even for some soils, uh, some plants it can be less than 1. So natural salts in saline soils include mainly neutral salts such as chlorides and sulfates of sodium, calcium, magnesium and potassium although sodium chloride dominates. Carbonates and bicarbonates are usually absent. Many saline soils contain appreciable quantities of gypsum lower in the profile. The pH of saline soils saturated past taste remains near neutrality but may be as high as 8.2 to 8.5. Saline soils have good soil structure. If we see the physical properties and chemical properties, what, what is there in saline soils? So they have good soil structure 
because excessors keep the clay particles in flocculated state. Flocculation helps particles cling together. They are bound together and initiate their binding into aggregates. So, saline soils generally have good physical properties. They are usually porous and permeable. So, leaching these soils with low salinity water tend to disperse the fine texture saline soils resulting in low permeability to water and air. That is an issue that these soils become low permeable to water and air. A sporty growth of crops, burning of leaves and white salt crust are field indicators of soil salinity. So, these are the symptoms on the plant. Generally, salinity is observed in patches. So, you will find burnt up plant in patches if your soil is affected by salinity. Barren spots and stunted plants may appear in cereal or forage crops growing on saline soil. So, many times you can plant the crop, you can do the sowing of the crop, plant can germinate and grow, but after certain period of time they will start dying or they may stop their growth. So, you can see this picture, this picture is from Jajar district of Haryana and you can see they have planted rice crop in this soil and because of salinity problem and there was no rainfall. So, you can see the, the death of the plant is occurring and you can see white crust of salt on this saline soil of Jajar and you can see the death of the plant. These plants are dying, uh, these are rice plants. And you can see sometimes uh, due to salinity, if there is no rain, then farmers are forced to get their uh, land grazed by animals or because they, they, they are not expecting such crop to yield, yield the grains. Now, soil salinity classes, again you can see uh, different classes of soil salinity. Uh, non saline soil, EC could be 0 to 2 decimals per meter and effect on uh, crop plants is salinity effects are negligible, means up to 2 in general is the safer limit. However, some plant may be sensitive even at 0.5 or 0.8, slightly saline 2 to 4 and yield of sensitive crops may be restricted, but many crops can be tolerant or resistant to this uh, EC. Moderately saline 4 to 8 decimals per meter and yield of many crops are restricted at this EC. Strongly saline 8 to 16, only tolerant crops yield satisfactory, maybe date palm could be useful. Very strongly saline more than 16 EC and only a few tolerant crops yield satisfactorily. So, you can see the different grades or levels of EC. Electrical conductivity of the saturated, extra, saturated extract, if it is more than 4 decimals per meter and exchangeable sodium percent level is more than 15 percent in these soils, saline sodic soils. Uh, the pH values of these soils are usually less than 8.2. These soils have both excess soluble salts and exchange, uh, excess exchangeable sodium. The dominant salts in saline sodic soils are chlorides and sulfates of sodium, calcium and magnesium along with carbonates and bicarbonates. Saline sodic soils. The physical conditions of these soils are good as long as there are high salt levels. High concentration of salts keeps the colloids flocculated and well aggregated. Uh, leaching of salts may cause dispersion and accompanied degradation of soil structure and loss of water permeability. Now, we come to another group, third one which is sodic soils or alkali soils or black alkali. So, sodic non-saline soils contain high proportion of exchangeable sodium more than 15 percent which is quite dangerous. In colloidal surfaces which keep the particles dispersed and prevent them from binding into aggregate. So, soil aggregation is not there. So, excess exchangeable sodium has an adverse effect on physical, chemical and nutritional properties of soil. A dense layer of clay occurs at or near the surface 
of sodic soils. This layer often called a clay pan is a root restrictive layer. Many soils of ESP more than 15 or sodium absorption ratio more than 15 have very poor soil physical properties which are unsuitable for crop growth. Contents of neutral salts are low. The salts present in sodic soils are capable of undergoing alkaline hydrolysis. Carbonates and bicarbonates of sodium, calcium and magnesium predominate in sodic soils. The electrical conductivity of saturation extract is less than 4 dC Siemens per meter at 25 degree centigrade. pH of saturated soil paste is higher than 8.2. In some cases, it can be as high as 10.5. Dispersed and dissolved organic matter present in the soil solution of some highly sodic soils gives them a dark color for which these soils were called black alkali soils. So, now you can see the dispersion of the particles and flocculation. So, this is representation. So, on the left side it is dispersion means there is no binding of the particle. You see picture number A and see the B here it is flocculation. So, here dispersion is happening and which is causing difficulty in root growth or it causes difficulty in movement of water through capillaries. So, the dispersion of clay particles creates poor soil structure and these soils are impervious and of low hydraulic conductivity means movement of water within these soils is getting affected because it is reduced. The total salt concentration in sodic soils could be low or high, but the concept of sodicity is based on the ratio of sodium to calcium and magnesium means sodium ratio uh, divided by calcium and magnesium such kind of ratio are there which is sodium absorption ratio or SAR. The principal cause of alkaline reaction of sodic soil is hydrolysis of either the exchangeable cations or of such salts as calcium carbonate, magnesium carbonate or sodium carbonate etcetera. Hydrolysis of the exchangeable cations take place according to the following reactions. So, you can see reaction that on clay you have sodium ions and with the aid of water certain hydrogen may replace this sodium and this sodium is released. So, this sodium really release sodium or free sodium will cause several problem. The displaced sodium does not combine with inactive hydroxyl ion which results in an increase in the OH that is hydroxyl ion and increased soil pH. So, this reaction is responsible for creation of alkalinity in these soils because hydrogen is removed. Uh, hydrolysis of compounds like calcium carbonate and magnesium carbonate takes place according to the following reaction. Again there is production of hydroxyl ion which raises the pH of the soil. So, you can see calcium carbonate in the presence of water, it is converted into calcium ion 2 OH that is hydroxyl ion plus carbonic acid. So, therefore, this uh, OH ion are increased. Here hydrogen ion is in inactivated through combination with carbonate to form weakly ionized carbonic acid. So, hydrolysis of calcium carbonate and magnesium carbonate is limited in soil due to their low solubility and therefore, they tend to produce a pH in soils no higher than about 8 to 8.2. Now, see major distinguishing feature characteristics of saline and sodic soil. What are the major differences chemical, physical and with respect to crop growth? So, chemical changes in saline soils you can see there are neutral salts consisting of chlorides and sulphate of sodium, calcium and magnesium. In sodic soil, you get neutral salts are generally absent. Appreciable quantities of salts capable of alkaline hydrolysis, for example, sodium carbonate present. In saline soil, the pH of saturated soil paste is less than 8.2 and the pH of the saturated soil paste is more than 8.2 in sodic soils. And electrical conductivity of the saturated soil extract is more than 4 
DC Siemens per meter at 25 degree centigrade. And in this case, this uh, uh, ES, ESP is more than 15 and CEC is less than 4 DC Siemens per, P, uh, per meter at 25 degree centigrade, but may be more if appreciable quantities of sodium carbonate are present. So, in saline soils, there is no well defined relationship between pH and ESP. The pH and ESP are related in sodic soils. Uh, chemical uh, characteristics continues. Soils may contain significant quantity of sparingly soluble calcium compounds like gypsum in saline soils, particularly in lower, uh, lower horizon. Uh, in sodic soils, sodium is the dominant soluble cation. That is why its name is sodic soil, means you got lot of sodium there. So, high pH of the soils results in precipitation of soluble calcium and magnesium such that their concentration in the soil solution is very low and gypsum is nearly always absent in such soils, said sodic soil. Now, see differences of, of in physical properties of these two soils. For excess soluble salts, the clay fraction is flocculated and the soils have a good structure. Flocculated means aggregated. Excess exchangeable sodium causes dispersion of the clay and poor soil structure. Permeability of soils to water and air is good in saline soils. However, it is restricted in sodic soils. Now, effect on plant growth, uh, comparison of saline and sodic soils. So, in saline soils, plant growth is as adversely affected chiefly through the effect of excess salt on the osmotic pressure of soil solution resulting in reduced availability of water. In sodic soils, chiefly through the dispersive effect of excess exchangeable sodium resulting in poor physical properties. Next is in saline soils, through toxicity of specific ion, sodium chloride boron could be toxic to the plants. Here in sodic soil, through the effect of high soil pH on nutritional imbalances including a deficiency of calcium. And through toxicity of specific ion like sodium carbonate molybdenum, they may be directly harmful to the crop plants. Now, see differences with respect to soil improvement. In case of saline soil, improvement of saline soil essentially requires the removal of sol soluble salts in the root zone through leaching and drainage. So, this is the best practical way to reclaim saline soils that you leach down the soluble salts. However, it is not applicable in sodic soils. Chemical amendments followed by leaching, irrigation and drainage are needed. So, in case of uh, sodic soils amelioration, you need certain amendments and followed by leaching. So, we need to see reclamation and management of saline soils because these kind of soils are not good for the plant growth. Many times growth of the crops is stopped or reduced or finally, you do not get good economic yield. Therefore, reclamation of such soil is required if you want to produce the crop. So, we will deal with reclamation under two different parts. So, first we start with saline soils. So, definitely integrated soil, water and crop management strategies or practices are needed to manage saline soils for crop production. No, no single strategy or practice will work out. Suppose you have uh, leached down the salt and you have made soil good, but still you are irrigating the soil with saline water, then again they will become saline. So, we need to take the things in totality if we want to reclaim the saline soils. So, many low salinity soils can be profitably used for suitable salt tolerant crops without undertaking time consuming and costly reclamation process. So, of course, certain soils are having very light salinity under those conditions, slightly uh, tolerable crop, uh, crops which are tolerant to salinity can be successfully grown. However, in some cases, salt may either be diluted to a tolerable limit or removed by leaching. Some soils need uh, reclamation. Next, some soils are more profitably used for salt farming. If it is too high, salt concentration is too high, salt farming is possible. 
like in, in coastal areas people go for salt farming. Where there is a salt crust on the surface, decrusting may be done by mechanical scraping and with soil flushing for improving crop growth. So, different methods are available, but leaching is needed in the reclamation of most saline soils. It refers to the removal of excess salt from the soil profile with the percolating water. Means, this is the meaning of the leaching that you apply some water or irrigation and then percolate the salt beyond the root zone. This process is known as leaching. So, leaching requires more water than normal irrigation and the amount of extra water needed must be apprehended before leaching is done. Some soils may need uh, decrusting before leaching. Some soils are only slightly saline for shallow rooted crops. The salts may be driven below the root zone by temporary leaching. The technique will need less water than normal leaching. No chemical amendment is normally needed for reclamation of soils which contain excess salts only without excess uh, exchangeable sodium. Now, what are the options and principles of management of saline soils? A set of crops, number one is selection of salt tolerant crops. A set of crops having threshold values close to the ECE of the soil under consideration should be selected for different crop seasons. It can be viable option for sustainable management of soils with low salinity without employing significant reclamation efforts. There are some crops that can tolerate moderate to high salinity. Dilution of salts in the root zone. Salts affect crops via the roots unless sprinkler irrigation is done. Salt hazard can be reduced if salt concentration in the root zone can be lowered. Drip irrigation with good quality water is an efficient system of diluting salts around the root zone. Now, improving the soil structure of saline soils. So, using organic amendments to improve infiltration and hydraulic conductivity. Decom decompaction and destruction of root restrictive layers improve rooting of plants and hydrological conditions of the soil and improving leaching of salts by irrigation and drainage. So, extra water is needed to leach excess salts out of the root zone. The quality of irrigation water and draining away the salty waters safely should also be important consideration. Other is reducing evaporation with mulch or cover crops. Higher evaporation concentration concentrates soil solution and increases capillary rise of ground water. So, in this case what happens due to high temperature there may be evaporation from the surface and sometimes salt come with the capillary rise. When capillary rise and the water comes near the surface, it brings some salts also. So, that way this upper soil parts are enriched by, uh, enriched by the salts. Maintaining the ground water table at a safe depth below the root zone. Normally, if your ground water is very, very shallow and under those conditions, soils normally become saline. Maintaining a crop while reclamation is underway, the crop will be benefited from the management practices and compensate for the cost of reclamation. So, certain crops can be established in saline soils and that can help in, in lowering the uh, problem. Uh, selection of salt tolerant crops for saline soils, the maximum average EC value the crop can tolerate without any decline in yield is known as the threshold value you need to understand it. I repeat it, the maximum average ECE value the crop can tolerate without any decline in yield is known as threshold value. So, the percent loss in yield for each unit increase in EC above the threshold is known as slope coefficient. So, sensitive crops uh, having threshold EC value in parenthesis. For example, beans, beans are quite same sensitive one carrot 1, strawberry 1, 1, uh, onion 1.2, almond 1.5, blackberry 1.5, plum 1.5, apricot 1.5, orange 1.7, 1 
peach 1.7, groundnut 1.8. So, this is the list of the crops which are very, very sensitive to EC. Moderately tolerant to tolerant crops, threshold EC value is given in the parenthesis, red beet 4. So, no problem here. Harding grass 4.6, squash 4.7, cowpea 4.9, soybean 5, bird's foot trefoil 5, perennial rye grass 5.6, durum wheat 5.7, barley forage 6, wheat 6, sorghum 6.8, sugar beet 7, very high, and barley is 8. So, you can, you can see these are moderately tolerant to EC. Now, there may be some crops which are a uh, toll land to chloride also because chloride is also an issue. So, perennial rye grass, durum wheat, barley, wheat, sorghum, Bermuda grass, sugar beet, wheat grass, crusty fairway, crested fairway, cotton, tall wheat grass, and barley, etc., are toll land to chloride. Now, you see this uh, salt is scraping. Uh, if your soil is having salt on the surface, they can be scraped by some spade or by some uh, implement. So, what is salt scraping? It is required for saline soils. So, in soils of arid and semi-arid regions where a salt crust often develops on the soil surface due to high evaporation and low leaching. So, here scraping is the simplest way of reclaiming a saline soil if salts are accumulated on the surface. The mechanical removal of salt is employed. In such environmental conditions, this practice is appropriate as suggested by Kang and co-workers. So, removal of the salt layer exposes the relatively low salinity subsoil which gives a better yield because there is no salinity in subsoil layer or maybe very small fraction of soil salinity. But the process has a limited success because salts tend to accumulate again because there may be some capillary rise there may be water which is saline for irrigation. So, salts further accumulate due to lowering the ground uh, level through salt scraping or soil desurfacing in relation to the water table. Scraping of salts improves plant growth only temporarily. Moreover, disposal of scraped salt is a problem. So, overall this is not a permanent solution of the pro problem. However, for temporary, temporary improvement, we can go for this removal of the salt from the surface. Then next approach is salt flushing. So, salts in surface crust in soils with low permeability are sometimes washed away by flushing with water over the surface, just cleaning. So, for flushing, the field is first ponded with water to dissolve the salt. Soil flushing is particularly feasible when flushed salts can be disposed of with irrigation or rainwater in nearby natural drainage system such as river. Of course, it is not very practical approach. A sufficient downward gradient is required to carry the water away, means you need some, some kind of slope. Now, next and best practice for reclamation of saline soil is your leaching. So, removal of excess salts below the root zone and through the soil profile with percolating water is known as leaching. Again, you understand removal of excess salts below the root zone and through the soil profile with percolating water is known as leaching. So, leaching is a natural process in well drained soils of the humid regions. In arid and semi arid regions, there is not enough rain water to leach the salts released by weathering or accumulated by capillary rise of ground water. Uh, their leaching is added by, aided by irrigation if enough water is available. Soil permeability is usually low and the ground water table is very high in saline soils of the humid regions. So, artificial drainage is needed to remove excess water and salt and to lower the ground water table. That, that is another Another problem, if your water table is very shallow, then you need to drain out water. However, in areas of good natural drainage, there is no need of artificial drainage for leaching the salts. Leaching should preferably be done 
when the soil moisture content is low and the ground water table is deep. In that case, it is good practice. Now, reclamation and management of sodic soils. Several different approaches including chemical amendments, tillage operations, crop management practices, hydrological manipulations and electrical currents have been used to ameliorate sodic and saline sodic soils. A number of tillage options such as deep plowing and subsoiling have also been used to break up the shallow, dense sodic clay pans and or natric horizons that occur uh, within 0.4 meter of the soil surface. Management of sodic soils also requires leaching through irrigation and drainage. However, before leaching, excess exchangeable sodium must be replaced by some suitable cation so that the ESP can be lowered to the desired level although with growing suitable crop. So, in this case you need some amendments so that the sodium is removed and then this sodium can be washed away. This sodium can be accumulated on the clay particles or humus particles or at many other places and that sodium is required to be removed because main problem is because of this sodium. So, that sodium can be removed by calcium or by uh, sulfuric acid. The replacement needs amendments that contain calcium or that produce calcium ions after application to the soil. Now, number one is crop selection for sodic soils. So, rice and dhecha can be used in this case, Sesbania aculeata is dhecha. Another species is Sesbania rostrata. Sesbania rostrata is stem nodulating uh, Sesbania and this is your uh, root nodulating. In both cases, there may be some nodules on the root, but rostrata is primarily a stem nodulating legume or Sesbania. So, these are normally used as green manure, but they can be used for reclamation of sodic soil also. So, rice also very tolerant to sodicity. So, appear to be tolerant, wheat and bajra are only moderately tolerant and legume crops like mash, faciolus mungo which is known as urd bean also or black gram and lentil are relatively sensitive to excess exchangeable sodium. So, we need to select the crops which are tolerant to sodicity. There may be certain grasses like kernel grass that can be established. So, crop selection for sodic soils is also important. Which crop will be the first crop after reclamation of the soil? Such decisions are to be made by the farmer. So, crops tolerant to high exchangeable sodium. Kernel grass which is known as Diplacne fusca, Rhodes grass, Chloris guiana, Para grass, Brachyria mutica. It is quite common. Uh, the common ameliorant or you can say it can be established in sodic soils. Bermuda grass is your common dhub grass, cynodon, dactylon. Rice oryza sativa is very very tolerant particularly when you grow rice in standing water. It does not matter what is the pH of the soil if you keep a water log soil for rice production. So, because uh, it can it has the capacity to change the soil pH. If you have standing water, it will change the, uh, neutralize the soil pH. Uh, even acidic pH of 3 can be brought to 7 and alkaline pH of 10 can be brought down to 7. So, it has been observed that rice can be grown in soils uh, having pH range from 3 to 10, but condition is that it should be grown as submerged crop or water load crop. So, rice is there. And then dhecha, sesbania, aculeata, and sugar beet is very, very tolerant crop to sodium. And crops semi tolerant to exchangeable sodium are wheat, triticum estivum, barley is very, very uh, uh, tolerant compared to other crops, and oats, raya, senji. Senji is melilotus perviflora, bajra is penny, situm, typhoids, cotton, cosipium, hirsutum, barsim. Trifolium alexandrinum, sugarcane, sacrum officinarum, and crop selection for sodic soil continues. 
crops which are moderately tolerant to boron. Cabbage, Brassica oleracea capitata, turnip, Brassica rapa, Kentucky grass, blue grass, Poa pretensis, barley, Hodium, hodium vulgare, cowpea, Vigna unguiculata, oats, Avena fatua, corn, Gia maize, in India we call it maize also, artichoke, Sayonara iscolimus, tobacco, Nicotiana tabecum, mustard, which is also known as Indian mustard, Brassica jansia, and clovers like sweet clover, uh, medley lotus indica, squash, cucurbita pepo, musk melon, kharbuja, cucumis mello, and cauliflower, Brassica oleracea botrytis. In continuation to the crop selection for sodic soils, let us see crops which are tolerant to boron. So, alpha alpha medicago sativa, this is a fodder crop and which has very deep roots, root systems. In India, two kind of uh, crops are available. One is annual alpha alpha and other is uh, perennial kind of alpha alpha and it is good uh, fodder crop. Then purple wedge, Visia bengalensis, parsley, petrocelinium crispum, red beet, beta vulgaris, sugar beet, beta vulgaris and tomato, lyco persicum, lyco persicum. And there is a group of crop which are tolerant to boron, very tolerant to boron, sorghum, sorghum bicolor, it is uh, a crop of dry land or rain fed areas, the sorghum, cotton, gossipium hirsutum, celery, apium graviolens, and asparagus, asparagus officinalis. So, these are the crops which can be taken up if your soil is having higher levels of boron. These boron levels are accumulated in soil primarily by irrigation water. So, many times irrigation water is having higher levels of boron and then it increases the level of boron in soil. The increased level of boron is not good for the growth of the crop. Under such circumstances, we can grow the, the crops which are tolerant to the boron levels. Now, amendments for sodic soils. So, definitely you need certain amendments, certain chemicals, certain organic materials by which we can reclaim or we can improve the sodic soils. So, several chemical amendments are available. They have been proposed for the reclamation of uh, sodic soil. Lot of research work has been done and recommendations have come up and the most common amendments include soluble calcium compounds such as gypsum and calcium chloride which produce calcium ions that replace the exchangeable sodium ions. Means exchangeable sodium ion means sodium ion which is uh, attached to the exchangeable sites. So, exchangeable sites are actually the soil collides. In soil you have two kind of collides, organic collides and inorganic collides. Inorganic collides are mainly clay minerals which have overall uh, negative charges. They also have positive, some positive charges, some negative charges, but overall charge of clay particles or uh, these exchangeable sites are negative. So, therefore, potassium is attached to those kind of exchangeable site which is known as exchangeable sodium. So, this exchangeable sodium can be replaced by calcium. So, we prefer to have amendment which contain calcium in them. So, that is why gypsum, gypsum is the most common, commonly used soil amendment containing about 16 to 18 percent sulfur also and it contains of course, calcium CaSO4, 2H2O and this is the cheapest source of sulfur also and government of certain states is giving subsidy on gypsum to the farmers so that they can buy it at a cheaper rate and they can improve the properties of the soil or reclaim their sodic soils. So, number one you have seen it is soluble calcium compounds such as gypsum and calcium chloride which produce calcium ions and that replace the exchangeable sodium ions. Next number two is sulfur, uh, contain, uh, sulfur containing materials or sulfuric acid and uh, number three is substances that produce sulfuric acid such as elemental sulfur, pyrite, ferrous sulfate and aluminum sulfate. 
This pyrite is important uh, amendment, particularly iron pyrite, which produces sulfuric acid upon its application to the soil. And in India, we got some uh, reserves or, of iron pyrite in Amjhor, Amjhor district of Bihar. So let us see how these amendments work in soil. Uh, gypsum, for example, gypsum reacts with both sodium carbonate and adsorbed sodium as follows. So you can see two reactions. Uh, first is sodium carbonate. Gypsum can directly react, react with it and makes calcium carbonate plus sodium sulfate. A second reaction, you see sodium is adsorbed on the clay complex and this can be replaced by calcium or CaSO4, gypsum and now clay has, uh, the calcium has taken up place of sodium in the clay complex and this sodium has joined sulphate to make sodium sulphate. So uh, in the both the reaction you can see this sodium sulphate is formed. So but this sodium sulphate is easily leachable. Now you can apply water and that can be percolated down so your soil will be uh, improved or reclaimed by this gypsum. But it is not easy to calculate the gypsum requirement. Several methods are available how much gypsum I can, uh, uh, I can add, the rate of gypsum ap application. It is decided mainly uh, on the basis of exchangeable sodium percentage, what level of ESP you want to keep in soil. If you want to reduce this ESP level to very high level, then high doses of gypsum are required. And if you want slight change in ESP, you need less doses. Some calculations, some laboratory procedures are available to work out the gypsum requirement. And also then you need to leach it down. So uh, calculations can be done to find out the leaching requirement. How much water should be added? That again will be decided by quantity of gypsum used or required as well as ESP level, exchangeable sodium percentage level in the soil. Calcium chloride can be used as amendment and it is CaCl2 2H2O is a highly soluble salt which supplies soluble calcium directly. Its reaction in sodic soil are similar to those of gypsum. So sodium carbonate is in soil, calcium chloride you have added from outside as an amendment and it forms calcium carbonate and sodium chloride, 2 NaCl. Cl. So again, if sodium is there on the clay complex, uh, clay, Na, clay, Na means you, this sodium is adsorbed to the clay and calcium chloride CaCl2 and this uh, sodium is replaced by calcium on the clay complex. Two sodium are replaced by one calcium, you can notice it and then sodium chloride is, is formed which is leachable. So this sodium can be removed from the soil, but again you have to leach it down after applying water. Now see sulfuric acid, it can also be used as an amendment. Of course, it is a bit expensive compared to gypsum or calcium chloride or other sources. So sulfuric acid upon application of sulfuric acid H2SO4 to soils containing calcium carbonate it immediately reacts to form calcium sulphate and thus provides soluble calcium indirectly. So in soils this calcium carbonate is mostly not very reactive. So first this uh, sulfuric acid will react with sodium carbonate and then it will form gypsum and this gypsum can act. So you can see here Na2CO3 plus H2SO4 carbon dioxide is released and you uh, sodium sulphate is formed and this calcium carbonate, carbonate react with sulfuric acid so calcium sulphate is formed or gypsum is formed and water and carbon dioxide then again this calcium sulphate will remove sodium from the clay complex like in previous cases and the sodium will be replaced by calcium and sodium sulphate will be formed finally and this sodium sulphate is leachable now you can leach it down from the soil. Now uh, next amendment is iron sulphate and aluminium sulphate. Iron sulphate or ferrous sulphate, uh, is, it is uh, uh, very effective in uh, reclaiming these soils. So iron sulphate can be called as ferrous, ferrous sulphate also. So both of iron sulphate FeSO4 
7 H2O. So, this is hetero, uh, heptahydrate and aluminum sulphate Al2 SO4 thrice 18 H2O. This is formula of aluminum sulphate are solid granular materials soluble in water. When applied to soils, these compounds hydrolyze to form sulfuric acid. So, they, they are forming sulfuric acid. So, FeSO4 reacts with water and it produces sulf, uh, sulfuric acid H2SO4 plus uh, ferrous hydroxide. And then this sulfuric acid H2SO4 combines or reacts with calcium carbonate and it forms calcium sulphate, water and carbon dioxide. So, uh, ultimately you are seeing in this reaction also like in last case here also first the calcium sulphate is formed which is gypsum and this calcium sulphate will react with clay, uh, clay uh, sodium complex and then NAC clay Na means two molecule uh, two atoms of uh, or ions of sodium will be replaced by one ion of calcium and then calcium replaces so, uh, the sodium, it, it takes the place of sodium and sodium sulphate is formed which is leachable, you can leach it down. Now, see sulphur, sulphur can be used as an amendment, but, but it takes time to make the sulphuric acid from added sulphur. It, this sulphur uh, will, will be converted into sulphite and then sulphate. So, it takes about more than one month time if you had have got normal particles of the sulphur. So, sulphur can be used, it is not soluble in water and does not supply calcium directly for replacement of adsorbed sodium. When applied to soils, sulphur undergoes oxidation to form sulphuric acid and gives reactions as shown below. You can see uh, elemental sulphur 2 s and power is 0 now you get oxy oxygen and it is converted into SO3 sulphate and you should remember that it is microbial uh, aided reaction means certain microbes are involved in this kind of oxidation. And then the sulphide form it will react with the water or moisture available in the form and it will form sulphuric acid H2SO4 and then this sulphuric acid will uh, react in the soil with the calcium carbonate or some other carbonates and then it will form calcium sulphate gypsum. And next is uh, iron pyrite, iron pyrite FeS2. It is another possible amendment for sodic soil reclamation and you can see it is uh, in four parts, four parts you can see this reaction. Part 1 uh, iron pyrite plus water plus 7 H 2 O it forms ferrous sulphate plus uh, sulphuric acid and then ferrous sulphate plus oxygen plus sulphuric acid it forms ferrous sul ferric sulphate and then third reaction this ferric sulphate uh, again reacts with, with uh, iron pyrite and it forms ferrous sulphate and 2 S and last step 2 S plus 3 O 2 plus 2 H 2 O forms sulphuric acid and this sulfuric acid will react with, uh, react with calcium and it will form calcium sulphate. So, certain organic amendments can be uh, added to uh, sodic soils and in organic amendment this farmyard manure at the rate of 10 tons per hectare has been found good to improve the physical, physical and chemical properties. The choice of amendment depends on the relative effectiveness as judged from the improvement of soil properties and time required and the risk of handling materials and relative cost involved. So, dear students, hope you enjoyed this lecture and it was useful to you. Thank you very much.